Hi, I'm John Nichols from The Nation magazine. And we're talking today with Greg Pallas, the author of the great new book, Vulture's Picnic, which is Greg's incredible investigation into energy, power, uh, how we get the resources that, that power our lives. And what Greg did was something that just about no other reporter in the world does these days. He actually went to the sources of the story, to the, the heart of where things happen, traveling around the world from the Arctic Circle to the Middle East to the Gulf region of the United States where he looked at the crisis that came off the Deepwater Horizon explosion and its aftermath. So we're with Greg Palast, who is uh, one of the, I, I don't even think it's, it's an exaggeration to say one of the great investigative reporters of our time. Uh, in fact, you're not really known, you're one of the few reporters that isn't known as something other than an investigative reporter. That's all I do. But of course, I have to do it for BBC television because you can't do it for American TV because, you know, investigative reporting is illegal under Patriot <laughs> Act 3. So I do this. Yeah. So actually, I was sent, it was a five continent investigation BP. I also have in there Fukushima, the investigation, financial vultures, but about half the book is following what happened out of my investigations of, of BP, which took me to the Amazon, Asia, Arctic Circle, you name it. And this book is just an absolutely rip-roaring great read. I mean, forget about yeah. forget about the fact that they, it's interesting and there's significant details. Uh, the hell so, with the facts, it's just a lot of fun. It's a good read, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. and, 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 and I think that, that in a conversation, a short conversation like this, we fall into the trap, right? You're a storyteller. You want to tell the story of yeah. the adventure of getting the story as well right. as the information you've That's what out. you get in the, the book. And that's in this book, which people should unquestionably get a hold of. But I want to take you, I want to take you back for a second here and ask you why it is so rare today that uh, you, what you just did, this thing of going to other countries, of sneaking over borders, of traveling from the Arctic Circle to the Amazon to get one story. We don't do that in America anymore. Do we? Yeah, because it, well, it's expensive too. Like, well, think about it this way: to get to the, I uh, was investigating Chevron in the Amazon. I have to go to an indigenous village to a tribe in the middle of the rainforest. Actually, it's a jungle. Mm -hmm. Unless, if you remember the Sierra Club, it's a rainforest. Yeah. It's, otherwise, it's a jungle. And and I get there. The, to get there, I'm told that there's a boat waiting for me, which is a dugout walk, mm -hmm. right, with a hand carved paddle, and you know, some. Native somehow comes out of the rainforest and grabs and takes me out there. And, but, you know, Anderson Cooper could do that story, well, except that he can't get his makeup man in the canoe. <laughs> or the tight T-shirt. Right. Yeah, and, that, that's, will go bad. and that's the thing. That's the thing. That American news is done cheap. And it's done, you know, yeah, Anderson Cooper is a great guy, but he was at the gym when they handed out the facts. Well, let me get you. So let's, let's dig into this a little bit more. American journalism is done on the cheap. There's no doubt of that. Newspapers laying off reporters, TV, you know, cutting back, investigative disappearing because investigative is expensive. But is there a line where you say, okay, this wasn't done because it costs money, and then another place where we come in and say, but it also might not be done because it steps on a lot of toes? Yeah. Okay, let me give you a real example out of the book, Vulture's Picnic. Okay, the, um, the, one of the main vultures in here is a guy named Paul the Vulture Singer. He's worth $4 billion. He's now probably the number one donor to the Republican Party. He's Mitt Romney's new sugar daddy and his um, uh, economics advisor. That may be wasting okay. money there. Though. <laughs> right, so, I, I'm, I'm, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm, I put on investigations of him. I tracked how he got his billions mm -hmm. to the Congo, to the, to the cholera quarantine camps. Then I, his associates, I get a lead, I go to Bosnia, to, to find out the information on this guy. It's, it is expensive, it's difficult, but, but the big thing is his guy, just this past week, calls up the network chiefs at BBC and says, we have a file on Greg Pallast. And he's been sued before. In other words, we're gonna sue threat, you now. Threat, now, threat, they don't have yeah. to threat, 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 smear, 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 they have a whole file. Now, BBC, if this were an American network, I'm toast. Yeah, they'd run from the, yeah, I'm toast. Scared, right? I'm toast. Yeah. America, we got a First Amendment. You get that case to court, you're going to win, ultimately. Right. In Britain, they don't have one, and so it's much harder. And yet, where you're going to take us here is that the BBC is willing to stand behind its reporter. The BBC will stand completely behind me, even though they have no protection of law. Mm -hmm. And they're willing to spend millions, and they have, when I've been attacked. 
It's cost them a fortune. In the US, uh, the New York Times can't lose a case because of the First Amendment, but it'll cost them a half a million bucks in legal fees, so they're not gonna run the story. Science for sale, blood on money, corporate vultures. Uh, Greg Palace, Vultures Picnic, an incredible book, an incredible reporter. And you know, when I, when I read this book, I thought of uh, the great British uh, parliamentarian Michael Foote. Yeah. Back in uh, 1939, when uh, the Germans invaded Poland, uh, Michael Foote took a, a, all the files from the British newspaper where he worked at. He went out to a country house, spent a couple weeks putting together a book called Guilty Men. And he yeah. exposed everybody who had been on the wrong side. This is a Guilty Men for 2011 and 2012 by my friend Greg Pallister. Go out and get it. This is John Nichols for The Nation magazine. Thanks so much for being with us.